Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike, and today I'm going to be talking all about the brand new HP Reverb G2. Now, last week I was invited to an official press briefing hosted by HP, providing details about their second generation Reverb Windows Mixed Reality headset. Now, the interesting thing about this headset is that it was developed in collaboration with both Microsoft and Valve. And for me, this is by far the single most interesting Windows Mixed Reality headset to date, and it packs some really nice features. So in today's video, I'll be giving you all the information that you need to know about this new headset, including a bit of background about the Windows Mixed Reality platform, the specs of the new Reverb G2, including the resolution, field of view, refresh rate, audio controllers, price, release date, and much, much more. I'll put timestamps to everything in the description down below. I hope you all find this video useful, and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so let's start with the basics. The HP Reverb G2 is a PC-based Windows Mixed Reality headset, and the first HP headset made in collaboration with both Microsoft and Valve. The Windows Mixed Reality platform originally launched back in October 2017, with a handful of headsets from various manufacturers, and stood out as a platform which offered an accessible headset to newcomers with its easy setup and inside-out tracking. And although this is the second generation reverb, hence being called the G2, this is actually the third headset from HP in the Windows Mixed Reality range. Unlike the previous HP Reverb model, which was aimed at business and enterprise applications, the HP Reverb G2 is primarily aimed at the gaming market. But I'm sure many of this headset's features will also appeal to the business sector, as this headset will completely replace the original Reverb in the HP lineup. The HP Reverb G2 is available to pre-order from today in the US through the HP website and Steam for $599. US This will start shipping out to customers in fall later this year. Other countries will be able to pre-order from around mid-June. So now let's get into the specs and get straight into the juicy stuff that you want to know, starting with the resolution and the optics. Just like the previous Reverb, the G2 has two 2160 by 2160 pixels per eye LCD panels, which run at 90 hertz with a 114 degree field of view. When we compare the Reverb G2 to other headsets available on the market, you can see that the Reverb G2 has the highest resolution in a consumer aimed product, which is gonna make it great for seeing fine detail in games such as text and in-game displays. Perfect for the sim enthusiast and gamers who want the very best visual experience in virtual reality. Although the specs on paper are the same as the original Reverb, the new G2 will be using new LCD panels and not the same ones used in its predecessor. HP claim that these new panels are brighter, provide better clarity, contrast, and have reduced mirror effect. It does seem like the whole VR industry is switching to LCD panels, with the Rift S, Cosmos, and Index all using LCD over OLED. These new LCD panels on the G2 use a full RGB stripe subpixel arrangement, which means that each pixel gets its own blue, green, and red subpixels. This means that you're likely gonna get a very sharp image, making text and other fine details much clearer with less screen door effect. Although it is worth noting that generally OLED panels tend to perform better in darker scenes if that's what you're looking for in a VR headset. The G2 will also use new Fresnel lenses designed by Valve, However, these aren't the same size or stacked and canted lens design used in the Valve Index. With the new LCD panels and lenses combined, HP claim to have completely eliminated any screen door effect, which is a bold claim indeed and something that I'll be wanting to test myself once I get my hands on a unit. All this amazing resolution is great, but just don't forget about the hardware that you'll need to run it. The minimum required specs to run this headset are the same as the previous Reverb, which suggests that you'll need an NVIDIA GTX 1080 with an i7 processor. But really, to get the most out of these headsets, you're going to want to be pushing an RTX 2080 or RTX 2080 Ti. The final thing to talk about whilst on the subject of optics is that the HP Reverb G2 will have a manual IPD adjustment slider. Now IPD is your interpupillary distance, essentially the distance between your eyes. And this headset will accommodate an IPD range of 60 to 68 millimeters, which is welcome over the original Reverb's software IPD adjustment. Now let's move on to audio, as this is another interesting feature on this new headset, as the audio comes from the valve part of this collaboration. The Reverb G2 will use exactly the same amazing audio system used on the Valve Index. 
These off-ear earphones sound phenomenal using BMR drivers and they sit off your ear which provides an incredibly comfortable spatial audio experience which is just perfect for gaming. You can remove these earphones from the head strap if you wish, but you don't have a 3.5mm audio jack on this headset to plug in your own headphones. So in this case, you would need to use your own pair of Bluetooth headphones instead. But honestly, I doubt that many people will want to do that as these earphones are really great and one of the main reasons why I love the Valve Index so much. The Reverb G2 also features dual microphones for communication in games and using the voice controlled Microsoft Assistant Cortana. But these aren't the same microphones used in the Valve Index, which is a real shame as they sound amazing. But we'll have to wait and see what the quality is like on these ones once I get my hands on the G2 headset myself. So now on to ergonomics and head strap design. The new HP Reverb G2 comes in at around 500 grams in weight, which is around the same as the Oculus Rift S and lighter than the Valve Index, which comes in at around 800 grams. The head strap is like a combination of both the original Oculus Rift CV1 and the Valve Index. It's like the CV1 with its adjustable Velcro straps on the side and elastic, meaning that it can stretch over your head to make it easy to get on and off. And it's like the Valve Index with the drop down section at the back, which nicely cups your head at the bottom. The materials used on both the face pad and the rear cushion, you might recognize as the same mottled gray material used on the Valve Index. And this is an antimicrobial material, which is really soft and comfortable. The headset also uses interchangeable face pads using a magnetic mounting system, just like the Valve Index, so you can easily swap face pads in and out if you wish. The headset design also allows for the head strap to rotate up 90 degrees, meaning that you can use the headset without putting the head strap on by just holding it up to your face, which I'm sure is a feature the developers are going to love who just want a quick look in VR during development. I definitely prefer this design over the Cosmos front flip up design, which prevented the headset from sitting snugly on your face. Also, great news for those of you out there that wear glasses in VR. HP have made the design more friendly for those who wear glasses, although it doesn't have the eye relief adjustment of the Valve Index, which was really great for fine tuning that. In the long term, I would still recommend you invest in a set of custom prescription lenses, which I'm sure will be available from both Widmo VR and VR Lens Lab in the future after release. The Reverb G2 will come bundled with a 6 meter single barrel cable, which is removable from the headset. And this uses a single display port and single USB-C connector for power from your PC. If you don't have a USB-C port or one that can provide 6 watts of power on your PC, a power brick is also provided in the box. A display port to mini display port adapter will also be included in the box if you want to use the headset with a powerful gaming laptop. This new cable design is a huge improvement over the original Reverb, which had a chunky double barrel cable and an awful connection box right at the back of your head, so this should make the G2 much more comfortable overall. It's a real shame that the Reverb G2 doesn't utilize the virtual link connector equipped on newer Nvidia graphics cards, although it's likely you'll be able to use that port for power delivery. For those out there that are running VR arcades with VR backpack PCs, there will be a shorter 1 meter cable accessory available along with replaceable wipeable face pads which are also an optional extra. The HP Reverb G2 is the first Windows Mixed Reality headset to have four inside out tracking cameras. Previously, all the Windows MR range just had two front facing cameras for tracking, and this would sometimes cause issues in game, particularly when moving the controllers behind your head. Along with the standard two front facing cameras, the Reverb G2 features tracking cameras on both sides of the headset to provide a much wider tracking volume. HP claimed that this tracking volume is two times greater than the previous HP Reverb. The Reverb G2 is trumped by sheer numbers of tracking cameras by the Rift S's 5 and the Cosmos's 6 tracking cameras. However, as we know with the Cosmos, the 6 tracking cameras were useless, so more tracking cameras doesn't always necessarily mean better. Sadly, my wishes for this headset supporting SteamVR Lighthouse tracking were completely squashed by HP and it will only support the inside out tracking system built into the headset. It's also being confirmed by HP that this inside out tracking system won't support hand tracking. However, the HP Reverb G2, just like all other Windows Mixed Reality headsets, does have a pass-through mode called Flashlight, which allows you to quickly see what's going on in the real world around you, if you need to. And this brings me nicely onto the controllers. As this headset doesn't support SteamVR tracking, it sadly won't be able to use the Valve Index controllers. It will use its own newly designed HP Windows Mixed Reality controllers, which come pre-paired with the headset using Bluetooth. This makes setup as easy as possible, as Windows MR is now pre-installed with all Windows 10 machines, so it should be very easy to get into VR and as simple as plug and play. 
I'm really happy to report these new controllers have a new ergonomic design, and HB have ditched the trackpad found on the previous controllers and just retained the thumbsticks. You now have A, B, X, Y buttons, along with a select and windows button on the face, which put them more in line with what Oculus and Valve are offering, which is great to see. And I'm sure developers are over the moon to see more parity across the systems when it comes to controller inputs. These new controllers also feature an analog grip, which is a nice upgrade over the previous grip button, which was just a click input on the previous Windows MR controllers. And this upgrade provides a more precise input when you grip items in games. The other neat thing is that these new controllers for the Reverb G2 are also backwards compatible with other Windows Mixed Reality headsets. This means that if you own an older Windows MR headset such as the Samsung Odyssey for example, you can upgrade to these controllers which will be available to order separately. However, older Windows MR controllers won't be forward compatible with the new Reverb G2, so just bear that in mind. Each controller for the G2 still requires two AA batteries each and uses light tracking, which was one of the weak points of the Windows Mixed Reality system in my opinion, as the controllers tend to burn through batteries very quickly. Although the controller ergonomics design has changed slightly, the fundamentals are still the same and it's been confirmed by HP that the battery life will be similar to the previous Windows Mixed Reality controllers, which is anywhere between 4-8 to eight hours of use before they all need replacing. So now let's talk about gaming. As this headset was designed in collaboration with Valve, they've ensured that this headset is fully compatible with the great library of content available on Steam VR. Although by default, you'll still be booted into Microsoft's Cliff House on startup just like any other Windows MR headset. Now that these new controllers are more in line with what other leading brands are offering, this means wider compatibility across the board and no more remapping of controller buttons to trackpads. This will also likely mean that these controllers will perform better when playing Oculus exclusive content using Revive, which I'm sure will get an update to support the new controllers in the future. Just like the previous Reverb, I'm sure the G2 with its high resolution display will be a surefire hit with the VR sim enthusiast community. These people want the very best visuals possible for the latest and greatest racing and flight simulators. Let's just hope that we all don't have to wait that long for Microsoft's flight simulator to come to VR as it looks incredible and I'm sure this is going to be stunning in this new headset. So like I said at the beginning, the new HP Reverb G2 will cost $599. US It's available for pre-order now in the US and will be shipping in fall later this year. Other countries will be able to pre-order the headset from around mid-June. The price point of the G2 is really interesting, especially when we compare it to other headsets available on the market right now. For those looking for a new Rift and weren't happy with the Rift S's minor leap forward and with Oculus's focus on the Quest, HB Reverb G2 might just be the next generation Rift we've all been waiting for. And at only $200 more than the Rift S, but with superior audio, manual IPD adjustment and higher resolution, this could be the headset to go for. HB are confident with this headset, undercutting the Cosmos in price, which found a tricky space in the middle of the market. Although, to be honest, it didn't help itself with poor marketing and awful tracking at launch. This is a very interesting play from HP, and I'm really interested to see how this pans out for them. I'm definitely looking forward to getting my hands on the headset and putting it through its paces to compare it to the other headsets that I use daily. So now let's jump to the outro for my final thoughts. Okay, so there we have it. That's the HP Reverb G2. Now this is probably the first Windows Mixed Reality headset I'm genuinely interested in and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on one so I can compare it directly side by side up against my current high-end headset of choice, the Valve Index. Now the one thing I'm still a little bit concerned about with this headset is the controllers. I love the new design by the way, but I'm still a little bit worried about battery life. In my previous testing with Windows MR controllers, they ate through AA batteries very quickly, so I would highly recommend investing in some decent rechargeables if you're interested in this headset. I personally use the Panasonic Eneloop rechargeable batteries, and I've added a link to them in the description down below if you want to check them out. Now, I've been saying for a long, long time that the Windows Mixed Reality platform is well overdue a refresh, and hopefully this new headset from HP is just the beginning of a new generation of headsets from third-party manufacturers. I just wish that Microsoft would use some of the amazing games that they own to add some leverage to the platform. Just imagine an official Halo, Forza or Gears of War game in virtual reality. That would be amazing and a great way to sell some headsets. But let me know what you think of the HP Reverb G2 in the comments down below. Are you excited for this headset? Are you going to pre-order one? If so, what games are you excited to play with this new headset? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.
Cheers.